Hello and welcome to part two of my lino cut printmaking tutorial. Today we're going to go over block prep, image transfer, and carving. The materials you'll need for this video is your block, your drawing or sketch, a pencil, a ballpoint pen, a sharpie, preferably a fine tip sharpie, and your carving tool. And then as an option you could also use the 400 grit sanding block or sanding paper in this section as well. First step is prepping the block. So we're gonna lightly sand the whole surface of the block. Not too much, just evenly sand the whole surface. This will help when we are printing the block in part three. But this step is also not 100% necessary. Maybe most people don't do this. I didn't do this step until recently, but I have found it does help with printing and inking up the block. Another optional block prep thing you could do is stain your block with India ink or watered down acrylic paint. Some people do this to help them see their carving marks, but because this design is so simple, I'm not going to do that for this block, but I do typically do it for my larger, more intricate designs. Next step is transferring your image to your block. So trace or scribble over your drawing with a pencil and then flip it over onto your block. And once your image is lined up and taped down, just retrace your sketch. I like to use a ballpoint pen because it presses the graphite from my pencil onto the block really well and I get a good clean transfer. But you could use whatever transfer method you would like. And we're gonna trace it one more time. Once the image is transferred onto the block and you've got all the details, now go over it again with Sharpie just so you don't smudge any of your lines around and lose details of your design. That would be bad. If you're not familiar with this tool, then here's a quick demo of how to insert the blades. The two blades we'll be using today is the smallest V-shaped gouge and the largest U-shaped gouge. You'll loosen the blade mount as much as possible to slide the blade in between the circle and that loose inner piece and then tighten it back down. There are a couple ways you could hold this tool. Honestly, I say just try a couple different hand positions and find what works for you. This isn't the carving tool I typically use, so I had to switch between a few hand grips. I say try holding it like you would a utensil, like a spoon or a fork, and try that. You could also try just gripping the whole thing with the butt of the tool in your palm. That allows you to push really hard on it. I also recommend switching between grips depending on the angle of the line you're cutting or how much like movement you need in the line you'll find your method i like to hold the block with my left hand so the block doesn't slide around on the table and then sometimes my left index finger is pushing back on the tool and that is to help me keep from skipping the tool like across the surface uh, with that in mind, you do want to keep all of your fingers out of the cutting path because sometimes your tool will just kind of jump out of the block and go for your hand and it does not feel good. These tools are sharp and they can cut pretty deep. I have stabbed myself a number of times by accident and it's not pleasant. <laughs> I try to start carving my block with the outline of the most forefront object in the image so this leaf looks like it's sitting on top of all the other leaves so i'm going to outline that first and i will work my way around the image outlining all of the leaves don't forget you're only carving away what you do not want to be in the print so i'm trying to carve around the background and all of the leaves as like an outline I wanted to include as much of the carving process as I could. I remember first starting out and just watching a bunch of people carve and it helped me develop my carving style so much. I just want to emphasize, take your time, go slow, don't rush it. Because uh, if you try to rush through carving, you're going to make a lot of mistakes um, and sloppy carving marks and you're going to be frustrated with your design and your block. But even if you do make mistakes, you know, don't let those get to you. I've often made little carving mistakes. Most people don't notice small little errors. I finished the outline of all of the leaves and I'm putting little X's on all of the areas that I want to completely carve out. And 
that way I don't get confused and accidentally carve a part of the leaf because all of these overlapping leaves gets a little easy to get lost in the design and forget what you're carving. Looks like I am going in on the veins of the leaves. Those will be white and as I approach the thinner lines on the leaves, I not really trying to dig down deep into the block anymore. I'm making a lighter, more surface level line. It's very faint. And then I just add some more thickness to those veins. And so here I'm just lightly going over these lines because I don't want them to be thick. You want to create a variety in line thickness and depth of your carving marks. Um, just to add more to your design. So here you can see how some of them are light and some of them are thicker and deeper. And now I'm just gonna start clearing out all these tiny white spaces with this smaller V gouge. I decided to add some texture to the pot and the ground because the background wall per se is gonna be just plain white, no marks. The leaves are gonna be black with some white line detail. And then I thought it would look nice if the pot and the ground had carving line texture just to set it apart from the wall or the background and the leaves. Gives more for the eye to take in and you can kind of create that shadow on the ground in the pot. It'll be a little more visually appealing. And feel free if you're following my design to, you know, deviate from how I've planned out my block. You could do the leaves white, the background black, you could leave the pot and the ground solid. Now we're going for the big chonker U gouge to clear out all of these huge areas that are just going to be white or the color of the paper. And still with these bigger tools, you want to go slow and steady. Um, Sometimes when you're digging out big chunks of the block, you can still make mistakes really easily. All right, here we go. Here's the whole block carved and ready to print. I'm really happy with how it came out and I'm very excited to see how it looks whenever I print it. This is all for part two of my Lino Cut printmaking tutorial. In the next video, we will go through inking the block and the printing process. We will not be using a press, so we will be printing by hand with a baron or with a wood spoon. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below so I can help you out. Don't forget to post any process shots or final print shots on your Instagram and tag me at Smish Studio so I can see what you make. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Uh, subscribe and hit the notification icon so you can see part three. All right, and I will see you in the next video. Good luck with your carving.